MyHighPlains.com. Hop on Facebook and add us as a friend or give us a like. Now, your Fox 14 News forecast first. And good Friday evening, everyone. I'm John Harris with your first look at the weather, and we've seen lots of clear skies today. Now we have some clouds rolling in from the northwest, a little piece of energy moving across southern Kansas. We're not expecting any rain or snow or too dry at the surface, but for a while, it will be mostly cloudy tonight. Now the winds are generally out of the east at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. The temperatures are holding steady in the 40s for most of us. In Dumas, we have 41. Guymon and Liberal, 44. Sperry, uh, Perryton, 42. Over Clovis, 48. Right here in the city of Maryland, 40. 40 degrees as we speak. Now looking at our forecast at 10 p.m., we'll call it partly cloudy and 40. In the morning, we'll wake up to low of 28, and by 10 a.m., temperatures moderating back to 40 degrees. By the way, tomorrow, we're headed to the 50s. It will be windy, warmer on Sunday, and then for next week, look out. Here comes the Arctic surge. More in a few minutes. The news starts now. Increased interest in the medical field, how the Texas Tech Health Science Center is dealing with an influx of applications. And clearing the way to move forward with a $1.9 trillion COVID relief deal. Rashad Hudson has details from Capitol Hill. And battling food insecurity in our area, how Bank of America is teaming up with the High Plains Food Bank. From KCIT-TV, this is Fox 14 News at 9. We continue to see fewer new coronavirus cases in our area. Thanks for joining us tonight. Let's take a look now at the latest data for the High Plains as we bring you the facts, not fear, First on Fox tonight. So far today, 108 new cases have been reported by surrounding counties. We currently have 5,700 active cases. Sadly, five new deaths have been reported today, bringing the death toll up to 1,277. More than 56,000 people have recovered since the beginning of the pandemic. The Texas Tech University Health Science Center says they have seen a huge increase in applications. Some of the interest in these increased applications can be attributed to the pandemic. The School of Nursing says they were initially concerned that students would be afraid afraid to apply after seeing pictures of healthcare workers tired and with bruised faces, but the Dean of the School of Medicine says he hasn't seen that hold any students back. I think they look at things and they see, I really would like to be uh, in a profession and to, to have a life's work where I know I'm gonna have an impact on society. I'm gonna be able to help people. For those who are considering applying for the School of Medicine or the School of Nursing at Texas Tech, head over to MyHighPlains.com to hear what you have to look forward to when it comes to applying. Today, the House of Representatives passed a budget resolution clearing the way for President Biden's COVID relief deal. Fox 14's Washington correspondent Rashad Hudson has the latest. That story, a part of our Democracy 2021 coverage. Rashad. Hi, President Biden and Democrats say they're not waiting around for Republicans to get on board with the $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan. Be, uh... Friday, House Democratic leadership met with President Biden and Vice President Harris about how to move forward the $1.9 trillion relief package. On Monday, we will begin working on the specifics of the bills. Hopefully, in a two-week period of time, we'll send something over uh, to the Senate. President Biden and Speaker Nancy Pelosi made clear they're prepared to pass the package without Republicans. We got a chance to do something big here. This is about crushing the virus. But Republicans like Missouri Representative Jason Smith say the package includes unnecessary liberal ideas. House Democrats are, dri are driving full speed ahead toward radical policies that will kill jobs, hurt the working class. Maryland Congressman Cindy Hoyer is still hoping for Republican support. We call it reconciliation. There's nothing in reconciliation that precludes Republicans voting for it. Whether to increase the minimum wage remains a major sticking point, but in the early morning hours of the Senate voting, Iowa Senator Joni Ernst helped pass an amendment to prevent it from happening during the pandemic. $15 federal minimum wage would be devastating for our hardest hit small businesses at a time when they can least afford it. Next week, while the House is busy with President Biden's COVID-19 plan, the Senate will begin the, the, the trial of former President Donald Trump. In Washington, Rashad Hudson, back to you. Rashad, the plan calls for a $15 minimum wage, so is that likely to stay in the bill? 
Well, the president said today that he doesn't believe it's going to stay in the bill. It was stripped out last night by Republicans and some support from Democrats. For example, Democratic Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia, he's not a fan of raising the minimum wage during the pandemic. So unless they get some more support from Democrats or some support from Republicans, it's likely not going to be in this bill. All right, Rashad, thank you. U.S. Representatives Ronnie Jackson and Joey Arrington have been chosen to co-chair the Texas Ag Task Force. That task force will advocate for Texas agricultural priorities in the House. Texas is home to 247,000 farms covering over 126 million acres, making it the top agriculture state in the country. For more political coverage, local, state, and national, visit our website, myhighplains.com. The Bank of America today announced the High Plains Food Bank as a neighborhood champion, a recognition that includes both grant funding and leadership training. Fox 14's Jack Kessler has the latest. Bank of America says the High Plains Food Bank was selected in recognition of their longstanding commitment to fighting food insecurity in the region. Have a, a meeting and, and go through kind of a, the, the rigors of, of all the applicants and, and High Plains Food Bank rose to the top. As part of the program, the food bank will receive $50,000 in flexible grant funding and an opportunity for engagement in virtual leadership training delivered by experts in the nonprofit sector. W. Ashley Allen, Amarillo Market President for Bank of America, says they are pleased to bring this to them during the pandemic. But they have a, you know, they have the big demand and need uh, at the food bank, but it is a very meaningful number that will help, you know, um, make the High Plains Food Bank more sustainable. Zach Wilson, High Plains Food Bank Executive Director, says they are grateful to receive this grant so they can continue to support their efforts in helping with food insecurity on the High Plains. Wilson says that the money will go towards feeding those that use the Kids Cafe as they are getting closer to spring. A tremendous growth uh, in the after-school meals that we're, uh, we are, are providing from you know, 600 to 800 before the pandemic started in March 2020 to uh, well over 1,000 to 1,200 meals a day now. Wilson adds the Texas Panhandle has been willing to step up and help the food bank in whatever way they can. Oh, the, the Texas Panhandle residents will, will step up to that and, and help meet the need and and each each is different capacity and, and ability to do so. Since the program's inception last year, Bank of America has invested $4.2 million in 84 organizations within 42 communities throughout the Neighborhood Champions Program. Live in studio, Jack Kessler, Fox 14 News. Allie? All right, Jack, thank you. According to Bank of America, the Neighborhood Champions Program is invitation only for nonprofits who are poised to take their work to the next level. Local activist and motivational speaker Melody Graves is gearing up to speak at a TEDx event in Central Texas. Coming up, how she hopes to influence change beyond the high plains. But first, here's John. Andy, thank you very much. Let's take a look at our soil temperatures. Two inches deep, 38 degrees, half a foot deep, 41. As the caption says, your full forecast is coming up next. The thing about working here on the High Plains, working at KMR Local 4, is that we're sharing stories of, of, of life, and it's about the people that that story directly affects. It starts with honesty and truth and making sure that you're getting the details right, being factual. And of the people who live and work here and who call this place home, I consider it a privilege to be able to sit in that chair and be able to give you the news each and every night. The Tower Cams of the Texas Panhandle are brought to you by BCL, roofs built on trust for over 10 years. Now, Fox 14 Chief Meteorologist John Harris from your local weather leader. And good Friday evening, everyone, and welcome back. We're just a couple of days away from the big game. Of course, we're talking about Super Bowl 55 in Tampa, Florida. And, of course, the stadium is an open-air stadium. We don't want it to rain. And earlier in the day, there could be a few thunderstorms. But by the time the game starts, which is 530 our time, it should be perfect. 74 degrees for a high in Tampa. And by the end of the game, 61 degrees like northwest winds throughout the day. And I hope that your team wins. Okay, let's bring it back to this part of the world. And, you know, the cold front 
cyclone that gave us all of that wind yesterday morning is now located well to the south of us. Still raining from around, say, uh, Beaumont to Port Arthur back into New Orleans, Jackson, uh, Mississippi, and Point C. Some thunderstorm activity around here. Again, we are too dry to support any moisture, but we do have some clouds rolling in over the top of us. And these are primarily high level clouds. They live anywhere from, say, 20 to 40,000 feet up. And that's about it. Now, earlier today, we had uh, delirious blue. Uh, this is our Pampa camera looking back to the southwest, checking out the nearest stars that makes its way to the horizon. By the way, sunset this evening occurring at 6.20 p.m. right at the time it goes to the horizon. Here comes the high-level clouds moving in from Oklahoma. Isn't that a pretty shot right there? All right, well, let's continue on as we zoom out. Again, not much going on this weekend. There will be a little frontal boundary that moves in over the top of us tomorrow. It gives us kind of a windy day, but then it starts to evacuate the area on uh, Sunday, and it will be a nice day. And then for next week, here we go. The Arctic air is going to come in two surges. The first surge will be on Monday night. The second surge comes in on Wednesday night to Thursday, and it's the second surge that is going to be a humdinger for all of us. We're talking some mighty cold temperatures. Now, today, it wasn't bad at all. Very seasonal. Borger, a high of 58 degrees for our friends up at Liberal. 52 at uh, Dalhart, 52. Clayton, 49. Tucumcari, a high of 57 this afternoon. Childress, 60. And right here in the city of Emerald, we tagged 55 this afternoon. That's three degrees warmer than we should be. Record temperature 77 coming in from 1925. And this morning, perfectly average, a low of 25 degrees. Currently outside, under a partly cloudy sky, it is 40 degrees. Our winds are out of the east at 9, so there's a little bit of a chill in the air. It feels more like 34, so again, the heavier coats would come in handy. Now, the winds will be generally out of the southeast at about 5 to 15 miles per hour tonight and then tomorrow again it becomes windy north winds at about 20 to 30 miles per hour and gusty for a while so even though we are headed back into the middle 50s just like today today's 55 will be much nicer than tomorrow's 55 because of that wind chill so this is our day planner forecast so you can plan your day in the morning we'll wake up to low of 28 windy weather from 10 a.m through 2 p.m at least wind gusts over 30 miles per hour temperatures will moderate into the low 50s and by four o'clock a breezy day and 50 55 seasonal weather. Other temperatures tomorrow for our friends and children will top out around 58 degrees over at Guyman 52, Tucum Carry 57, and then for Sunday, warmer weather returns. 65 is conservative. We may reach 66, 67, or 68 in Amarillo, but it does promise to be a nice day on Sunday. You'll have to figure out how you want to be outside and watch all the festivities of the game at the same time. Now, getting into next week. Thursday into Friday, here comes the secondary surge of cold air. There could be some pockets of light snow or flurries, and it will be cold. We're talking temperatures in the teens for daytime highs and wind chills around zero. By the way, Thursday morning, we could have wind chills around 15 below zero. Mighty cold air, some of the coldest air we've had in two years in this part of the world. And that uh, deep freeze continues on Friday, teens and low 20s, and a few flurries here or there. In the morning, we are waking up to temperatures chilling back into the 20s, low 30s, low of 20s. 28 degrees in Amarillo. Frontal boundary pulls up stationary right over the top of Amarillo, and we'll see a high of 55. Seven day forecast looks this way for the city on Sunday. Lovely weather, 65 degrees, turning colder by Monday night. Tuesday, our first surge of Arctic air is in place, 32 degrees for high. We may eke out a high of 38 on Wednesday. The secondary surge moves in on Thursday. Ice cold weather, 17 degrees for high, 16 on Friday and flurries or light snow here or there. In a nutshell, bundle up from head to toe next week and enjoy this weekend. Of course, you can go to myhighplains.com and always keep an eye on that interactive radar. Check out news, weather, and sports while you're there. Listen to back over to Andy and just Andy. Just Andy. Just Andy. Where'd Allie go? She's going to be uh, tuning in with us here in just a oh, little bit. Is. John, okay. well, we, you know, we, we had some really good days in there, so when, when it comes to call, we're going to... We're going to have to deal with cold weather. It is February after all. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks, John. You're welcome. One woman is dead, another injured after a wreck south of Amarillo. Troopers say 19-year-old Abigail Walling pulled into the intersection at Bella McCormick after stopping at a stop sign. Her vehicle was hit by an oncoming truck. Walling died at the scene. A passenger in her vehicle was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. The driver and the passenger in the truck were not injured. DPS still investigating. A Borger woman is pleading guilty for embezzling federal funds. Monica Moneymaker is charged with conspiracy to embezzle from a federally funded program and embezzlement from a federally funded program.
funded program. According to court documents, Moneymaker worked as an agent for the Borger Housing Authority. From 2016 to 2019, more than $500,000 of their rent deposits for the authority were not deposited into the bank account. Moneymaker admitted to embezzling those funds. She is facing up to five years in prison. We're celebrating Black History Month right here on Fox 14. Up next, how one judge here on the High Plains is making history in and out of the courtroom. But first, here's Clint. It's the district championship game in District 2, 2A boys basketball. Panhandle hosting Clarendon. We have highlights coming up in sports. You're watching Fox 14 News, brought to you by Kelly Roofing, proudly serving Amarillo and the surrounding area. You're watching Fox 14 News at 9 with Andy Justice, Ali Cosetti, Chief Meteorologist John Harris, Sports with Clint Brakeville. Fox 14 News at 9 continues. He's a political activist, a deeply involved community leader, a motivational speaker, and now... She's giving a TED Talk. Emerald's own Melody Graves will take the stage next Saturday for a TEDx event. Fox 14's Kaylee Green caught up with her ahead of the big day. Melody Graves has been speaking since she was 16 years old. But the culmination of her speaking career will be kicking off the TEDx event at Texas State University. What I have chosen to do is talk about the power of the amplified voice. That's the title of my talk. And it's basically my journey through finding my voice as a political activist. Um, a lot of personal insight, a lot of encouragement, um, and a lot of calling people to action as we see these injustices that are going on right now. Graves was recently elected as the president of the North Heights Advisory Association. She's the second vice president of the Amarillo Branch NAACP. Now it's our turn to pick up that, that same thing and continue fighting to make a difference for us. After watching George Floyd pass away on the screen, I think I will forever be changed. Graves has also protested against racial injustice. As the parent of a black child, it, it, it hit home in a way that other, other things have not hit home that way. But it made me very excited about the change that could happen and dedicated to making sure that I was part of that change. Graves says she believes it's important not to just talk about how to make things better, but to do the work. The main thing is that when you see an injustice happening, that you have have to say something and if we get enough people saying something enough people amplifying their voice then we will be able to make the changes that we need to see um, not only here in Amarillo but across the world and when she found out she was giving a TED talk Graves says she was in shock I call my mom and dad <laughs> I was so happy. So many people go through their life as a speaker and they don't have this opportunity so I am just blessed Graves has been working on her speech since November and will speak from memory. She will speak first at Texas State University's TEDx event. That's next Saturday. Live in studio, Kaylee Green, Fox 14 News. Andy. Kaylee, thank you. Tickets are required to watch Graves' TEDx talk live. Then it will be available nationally on the TED Talk website. In 2020, Judge Tatiana Frosto made history right here on the High Plains. She became the first ever African-American and female judge of the 181st District Court. Fox 14 Charday Lorraine spoke to Judge Frosto as she embarks on her new journey. Preserve. Preserve. Like this is reality. This is really happening. Judge Tatiana Frosto is still reveling in a very historic moment right here on the High Plains. I did a lot of thinking, a lot of praying about the direction of my career and ultimately decided to apply and here I am. Last year, the Honorable John B. Board announced his retirement. And I got the phone call from the governor's office and I was just overcome with joy and thankfulness. Then on October 1st, 2020, protect and defend and defend. Frosto was sworn in as the 181st District Court's presiding judge. It's a position she thought would take longer to obtain. You know, people tend to think judges are old sometimes, so I at least thought that I would be older, so it was a more long-term goal. But it's not just her age. Judge Frosto is also the first woman and minority to be appointed in Potter and Randall counties. I trusted and I believed and I bet on myself. Prior to taking the bench, Judge Frosto practiced family law and criminal defense in the Amarillo area shortly after completing law school at Texas Tech in 2009. And Amarillo is just that kind of place. The longer you're here, the less likely it is that you're going to leave because you just 
really appreciate the people and the community. And while juggling other titles, such as mother and wife, Judge Frosto plans to use her newest title to inspire young girls in the communities. For a child that looks like me to come and look at that wall and see, you know, there's there's an African-American woman who is or was a district judge, depending on when they come. I hope that that inspires them. I hope that it, that invokes in them, you know, the aspiration that if she could do this, I could do this. Judge Frosto is also the chairman of the Amarillo Art Institute, board member of the Opportunity School, and a volunteer and mentor for Project Safe Neighborhoods. And to see footage from Judge Tatiana swearing in ceremony, just head over to our website, myhighplains.com. Protecting students and staff in dangerous situations. Coming up, we're going to introduce you to Spearman ISD's Guardian Program. Meet Judge Faith Jenkins, first in her class in law school. It's true. Then her own practice and her own courtroom. I've got skills. Now she's got a new home, Divorce Court. Weekdays at 12 on Fox 14. For all your local weather needs, the KAMR Local 4 Weather App. Download today. Welcome back, everyone. Region 16 honored area school counselors today as part of National School Counselor Week. Today, they held a special program at the main Region 16 campus on Bell Street in Amarillo. The organization took time to highlight Dumas ISD for receiving the Crest Award. Crest stands for Counselors Reinforcing Excellence for Students in Texas. The award is given by the Texas School Counselors Association. The Guardian program, it's something Spear and ISD officials say they're glad to have, but hopefully won't have to use. Fox 14's Jason Bridge has more on how the program could save lives of students and faculty. If anyone enters our building and plans to do harm to our students or our staff, they will be met with force and they will be met with guardians. It's known as the Guardian Program. It's where faculty who remain anonymous to the public and students are allowed to carry handguns on their campuses and use them in times of crisis, such as an active shooter situation. We hope, as every school district does, that this never occurs because it'll change our lives. It'll change everyone's lives. Gist, who's only been with Spearman ISD for several months, had something similar at his previous district and says the selection process and what the faculty goes through to become guardians is rigorous as it should be. They're all strategically placed and, and trained. We go through psychological exams. Uh, they go through training. They have to qualify. They have to have their Concealed handguns are pretty intense to CHL itself. And then on top of that, we before we allow anyone to carry, we want to put them through a minimum of 16 hours uh, of training. That's on and off campus. And one of the biggest advantages of having guardians on campus, Gist says, is time. The first five minutes uh, are the most critical time. And, and for us to get law enforcement here, it's generally at least going to take five minutes. We're a small town, so that's great. But that first five minutes, uh, us getting our kids secured and, and, and us securing our building are critical. Which could mean the difference between life and death. In Spearman, Jason Bridge, Fox 14 News. Yes, there's, there's only a select amount of people that know who the guardians are on each campus. Those includes the assistant superintendent, the school board, and other guardians in that program. If you're looking for creative ways to explain 19, we found one. Next, how one Texas doctor is using her artistic skill to teach others about the effects of the virus. KAMR Local 4 Mobile App. Breaking news as it happens is at your fingertips. And the most accurate weather forecast. KAMR Local 4 Mobile App. Download it today. Only on Modern Family. Nightly. Weeknights at 11 on Fox 14. A Texas doctor is taking an animated approach to explaining how COVID-19 works. Fox 14's West Rappaport shows us her immune cartoons. The end result is that SARS-CoV-2 spike protein is picked up by our dendritic cells. These cartoons say in a few words what can be hard to simplify, cutting through misinformation about the coronavirus. Many people were refusing to get the vaccine because they didn't really understand how it worked. Dr. Valentina Hoyos Velez is a breast oncologist and assistant professor at Baylor College of Medicine. So I said, well, maybe I'll just put a pause on the explaining cancer for now and just focus on 
explaining the vaccines to patients. Her immune cartoons are reaching beyond the Lone Star State. This pediatric nurse practitioner showed it to her patients in New Jersey, influencing their decision to get vaccinated. The average person that especially not in healthcare or in medicine, they don't know what those big words mean and what happens, they get more afraid of it. State officials involved in the pandemic response agree anything that simplifies the message helps. Not speaking um, like we're coming out of a scientific textbook, um, I think is is something that, that I've tried to do so that everyone has the ability to understand um, the negative effects of the disease and even in the positive effects of what we can do to slow the spread of COVID-19 in our communities. Perhaps most surprising, Hoyos Velez didn't know she could draw until the pandemic started. Nothing gets to the point uh, in my uh, experience as the cartoons have. I think it's great that the more people can use it, if they find it useful, yeah, I'm very happy. West Rappaport, Fox 14 News. Dr. Hoyos Velez uh, actually makes her immune cartoons in English and in Spanish. Coming up, the big game in Tampa is only a couple of days away now. Why Super Bowl 55 will be bittersweet for the Buck Center, AQ Shipley. And check out this pretty sunset from our Pampa camera. We're looking at your weekend outlook, the weather, in a moment. It's a really good crosstown matchup. Tascosa Rebels taking on the Paladero Dons. We have highlights coming up in sports. Fox 14 News continues next. Mike and Molly, weekdays at 5 on Fox 14. You're watching Fox 14 News, brought to you by iMart Express. Even without insurance, they have the right price on two pair of single vision starting under 40 bucks, and two pair of progressives start under 80. The countdown is almost over. Super Bowl 55 now two days away, but for one member of the Buccaneers, the big game will be bittersweet. Chris Hagan joins us now from Tampa with that story as we get ready for the big game. Chris? Hi again, Andy, you're right. Every player has a story to tell, and this one has a sad middle and perhaps a happy ending. Imagine spending 12 years in the NFL with six different teams but never getting to play in the Super Bowl. And then in a season when your team finally does make it all the way, you suffer a career-ending injury. Well, that's exactly what happened to Buck Center A.Q. Shipley back in November. What type of injury did A.Q. Shipley suffer at the end of the game? They just had a stinger. And it uh, looks like he's going to be okay. thought it was a stinger. I thought it was a stinger. I was literally about to go back in the game. I got all my feeling back. Strength was fine. Blah, 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 blah. Get an MRI the next day. I got a bruise on my spinal cord. And I was lucky as heck to walk away from the thing. And just like that, his playing career was over. He had had this injury back in 13, I believe. Uh, once we did the MRI and, and x-rays, um, it, it was determined he really shouldn't play anymore. It was about a... 48 hour period where I was really feeling sorry for myself and then it was like all right let's figure something out and kind of get back on your feet and I, uh, I went to him told him I wanted to be involved I uh, wanted to start kind of helping out coaching if I could he thought it was a great idea kind of got me involved right away AQ is adjusted to his new role but he admits Super Bowl Sunday will be tough it's going to be you know there's going to be a bunch of different emotions no question not being able to play but you know like I said I'm, I'm, I'm very very uh, okay with where I'm at. But there is one big benefit to retirement. I've been attacking this um, losing weight thing that all linemen kind of do when they're done. So I've lost like 40 pounds in like 10 weeks, yeah. You're gonna be handsome before you know it. Um, God, I hope so. AQ is looking good. He is feeling good. He tells me he's very disappointed he won't be able to dress out for the game. But get this, Andy. If the Bucks do win on Sunday, he will still get a player's Super Bowl championship ring, just like the rest of his now former teammates. Reporting live from Tampa, I'm Chris Hagan. The game is yet to be played, but I can already tell you, Chris, you are our MVP. Thank you so much for all the coverage that you brought us from Tampa. Everybody thinks, oh, it's great. He's working at the Super Bowl, but it takes a lot to get it done, and we appreciate you. You nailed it this week. <laughs> Hard working man Thanks right so there. We've got more news and weather after the break. Don't go anywhere. Thank you for the steps that you're taking to keep everyone safe, and there still may be more to come. But take comfort that better days are ahead if we continue to do our part, and we can get through this together as a community. So continue to keep your family and your neighbors safe. Now, Fox 14 Chief Meteorologist John Harris from your local weather leader. 
And welcome back, everyone. We're starting out with our Pampa camera where we saw lots of blue sky today and really a nice Friday, light winds. And of course, check out the gorgeous sunset right as the sun goes to the horizon. Here comes some high level clouds streaming in from uh, southwest Kansas and southeast Colorado. What a pretty picture right there. Sunset occurred at 620 this evening. Now, as we zoom out, the front that gave us all of the wind yesterday, well, to the south of us, we still have some rain showers from around New Orleans extending farther off to the east. And for us, well, we do have some energy aloft moving over the panhandles, but we're lacking low level moisture, no rain or snow tonight, but there will be some clouds primarily from I-40 to the north for a while, and then we will start to clear out. Let's talk about how warm it was today. Not a bad day for our friends over at Liberal, 52 degrees, Childress 60, the same at Portales, Tucumcari and Hereford 57, Dalhart 52 right here in the city of Amarillo. We hit 55 this afternoon, three degrees warmer than we should be. The record temperature is 77 coming in from 1925. Look how cold it can be. Five below zero in 1982. And this morning we saw an average low of 25 degrees. Currently outside from our downtown camera, we have 40. Our winds are out of the east at nine. Our humidity, 35%. Dew points at 14 degrees. Pressure right now is at 29.69 inches of mercury. And it is holding steady. On the winds, the winds will stay relatively light tonight. But then notice how they really ramp up tomorrow. A northwest flow at around daybreak. Then the winds kick around to the north. As a little frontal boundary moves through, the front will pull up stationary right over the top of the city of Amarillo, but winds could be sustained around 26 miles per hour for a while early tomorrow afternoon. That means windy and cool. Even though we will reach the 50s just like today, tomorrow's 55 will feel cooler than today's 55 because of the addition of the wind. Currently outside, light showers again to the east of uh, Houston back over toward Beaumont. Around here again, just the clouds rolling in across the northern counties. Houston has 50 over at Austin, 49 degrees. The same as San Antonio. Chilly for San Antonio. For our friends at Dallas and Fort Worth, we have 45 middle and 47 in Lubbock, 45 degrees. In the morning, we are waking up to a mostly clear sky. Temperatures chilling back into the 20s and low 30s. And throughout the day, tomorrow, sunshine, a nice day. A little bit breezy and a high of 55 in Emerald. On Sunday, perfect weather to be out and about. 65 degrees. Monday, turning colder late. For Tuesday, our first search of Arctic air, freezing all day long. Wednesday morning, low of 15, a high of 38. The secondary surge that comes in on Thursday and Friday will be a humdinger. We're talking temperatures stuck in the teens. Wind chills around zero. Thursday morning, we could have wind chills around 15 below. Also, a few flurries from time to time. Ice cold weather headed our way. Of course, you can go to myhighplains.com and always keep it on the interactive radar. Check out news, weather, and sports while you're there. Back over to Allie and Andy. Thanks, John. You bet. The city of Brownsville in South Texas has received 10,000 COVID-19 test kits from the state of Texas and will begin using them Saturday at the city's bus station on migrant families who are being released by U.S. Customs and Border Protection. This all according to city officials who told Border Report today. You can read that story at borderreport.com. There's some high school basketball games being played tonight that had some major playoff implications. And one of those games was played in Panhandle that featured the Panthers and the Broncos of Clarendon. Coming up, Clint Brakebill is going to break down those highlights from that exciting game that came down to the wire. But first, John has your forecast. And thank you very much. If you are traveling tomorrow in Dallas and Fort Worth, a high of 59 degrees. Brownsville, very warm, 78. Our friends in Midland, 63. What's Raj's secret weapon? It's a sweet green miracle. The Big Bang Theory. Weekdays at 6.30 on Fox 14. Winter weather comes with all kinds of questions. We're here to give you the accurate answers while keeping you informed on air and online. We can see snow, freezing rain, and possibly dangerous cold. Turn to John Harris and your local weather leader. Silver Star Nation is brought to you by McGavick Nissan. Start your deal online at McGavickNissanAmarillo.com. Sports with Clint Brakeville. In District 3, 5A boys basketball, three teams are tied for the final two playoff spots. Tasco, Sapaladuro, and Plainview. So a win today between Tasco and PD. Whoever wins this game gets the driver's seat to a playoff spot. BT Daniel for Tascosa gives them a seven-point lead with less than two minutes to go. Then Jaden knocks down a three in the corner. It's a 10 point lead. Patrick Edwards gets a steal, throws ahead to Tony Collins. He gets a layup. Tascosa finished the game on a 13 0 run. They win 78 to 62 into a panhandle, taking on Clarendon for the district championship. In the third, Zion Mercer passes to Coulter Lynch. 
He gets it back and knocks down the three. 54-45, Panhandle in the fourth. Sylvester Ballard with a three of his own, 71-69. Later in the fourth, Donovan Thompson, mid-range jumper, 73-71. Broncos, less than 10 to play. Broncos down 78-75, but they hit the three. We go to overtime. In overtime, Davis steals the pass, but West Jones gets it back and puts it in. 80-78. After that, Ballard drives, maneuvers, and lays it in. 80-80. Broncos with it. Jordan Herndon drives, passes to DaCosta. No look pass. And Davis finishes it, and they get the win, 87-84. Nazareth taking on text line. Potter for three. Nazareth's Caden Clevenger knocks down the three. Text line goes inside to Will Luther. He draws the and one, and he had 30 points in the game. Text line. They get the win. They're tied for the district lead, 52 to 72. Now, some of us may never get the chance to attend a Super Bowl, but one group of men are on the other side of that as they've never missed a Super Bowl. Jennifer Pinate has the story. Through the decades, the Super Bowl has evolved in unimaginable ways, but there's one thing that's remained unchanged from Super Bowl I in 1967 to this year's game. Here's my first six sticker stubs right here. We're talking about the Never Miss a Super Bowl Club. It's like the 4th of July. It's like Christmas. Don Chrisman, Tom Henschel, and Gregory Eaton are the remaining members going strong for 54 years. It's an expensive hobby. Oh, let's put it that way. And don't, I hope my wife doesn't see this show. These men thought their undefeated record would be tarnished. COVID-19 limiting capacity at Raymond James to 20 percent. I kept calling them every three days. I have to get tickets. I, you can't let me down. I'm one of your biggest fans. The NFL pulled through so they once again get to soak in the magic. They'll be in the stands when the Bucks make history as the first team to play at home. Ticket prices are are historic too, now selling for at least 10 grand. The first three were $12. The next five were only $15. 35 was 350 and 43 $800. Priceless memories come with every ticket purchased. We're Super Bowl 13. I finally get married. The wife sends us up to the NFL. Tom Angel's my name. Football's my game. 12 is in my frame, 13 is my aim. We get an invoice for four tickets. From creating memories with family to finding inspiration. I think it's 2006 when um, we had two head black coaches in the Super Bowl. That showed me the little kids are playing in the alleys and one day, one day we can be a head football coach. In a year unlike any other, they hope Super Bowl 55 unites people a little bit more than past games have. And it brought people together. It brought people together, Catholics, Jewish, blacks, whites. Sports brings people together. I would like to know what their favorite Super Bowl ever was. If you've been to every single one, that would be my first question to those guys. <laughs> favorite quote in that entire story was, I hope my wife doesn't see this. <laughs> <laughs> we spent a lot of money on tickets through the years. Oh, gosh. Okay. Thank you, Glenn. Yep. John's got a final look at the forecast when we come back. Keep it here. I already know. Weeknights at 1.30 on Fox 14. And welcome back, everyone. We do have quite a few clouds making their way across our north and northeast counties, but no rain or snow tonight. It will be a quiet night. Now, looking at our forecast for your Saturday in the morning, 28, rather windy at noon, chilly, 50 degrees. The wind subside a little bit by 4 p.m., 55 degrees. On Sunday, it will be a nice day, mid to upper 60s around Amarillo. Monday will be at 51, but then colder weather moves in during the evening. Our first surge of Arctic air will be here on Tuesday, a high of only 32, a low of 15. Wednesday, we might be able to eke out a high of 38 and then uh, the Arctic surge number two comes in on Thursday frigid. We're talking 17 degrees wind chills around zero uh, passing snow showers light snow Friday 16 for a high seven for low wind chills at night could be around 15 below zero mighty cold Arctic air headed our way. Listen back over to Allie and Andy. Thank you, John. All that more waiting for you at myplanes.com. Plus we're out there on Instagram, Facebook, all that other good stuff. Did you see those lows that John just said? Yeah. Why? <laughs> you, 
You haven't made it all the way through one of our winners. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Hold on. <laughs>